Good Saturday morning to you. Welcome into My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell. So excited to be here you, with you bright and early on a Saturday morning, you guys. Whew. And 7.15 got here quick. <laughs> it got here super quick. Let's plug in the mic. Um, well, the mic is plugged in, but it's not up close. I hope that you guys can find me this morning. And if you're enjoying uh, still being snuggled up in your bed, I'm so jealous. <laughs> so jealous. Uh, I hope you all have an amazing weekend and uh, join us today for the rest of the day. We have, uh, this is a special segment in an event called, oh my gourd, <laughs> it's fall. Uh, you all come on in. It's going on all day today until like late, 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 late at night, like 11.15 tonight, uh, essential time. I'm kicking off the Saturday Oh, I can't say that I'm bright out and bushy-tailed. I barely have any eyelashes on. <laughs> I was throwing my makeup on in a, in a whim this morning. How are you? Watch it from bed, Sandy. That's the perfect place to be this morning. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it's chilly here in Kentucky this morning. It's like 40, 40 degrees this morning. Ooh, burr. <laughs> burr, it's cold. So stay cozied up this morning if you are still in bed or catch a cup of coffee and watch the sunrise, maybe where you are. The sun is already up here in Kentucky, but you will come on in and join me today. You're so excited. I've missed you guys. I've kind of been on a little missing in action around here, but lots of action's been going on for sure. I just haven't been able to come on and join you all. Uh, live, good morning, Miss Heather. How are you, sweet friend? Miss Janice and Patty. You're new to the group? Awesome! So happy to have you. Listen, there are two groups that you can watch this event in today. Um, one is called the Creatives Depot. Some of you may already be members of, of that group or either a group that I'm going to mention. And the other group is Craft on the Clock, which, you know, has my heart too. So uh, you can watch it at either one of those groups today. And every 45 minutes, a new creator is coming on today. Thank you so much, Miss Lisa and Miss Char, for having me. And I uh, hope that you all will catch all my crafting friends this weekend. All right, you guys, we're doing some primitive style nesting boxes. Oh, and there is a fly zooming around here. Oh, goodness. All right, you guys. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Penny, watching from bed too. Okay, I grabbed these. I don't remember if I grabbed these at the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, but anyway, these little paper mache nesting boxes, you can find them at lots of craft supply stores. Good morning from Maryland, Miss Donora. Uh, chilly in Arkansas this morning too. Cool morning, yes it is Cheryl, I feel ya. It's, it's chilly here, I had to take some blankets out to my Nyla girl this morning. <laughs> if you all are regular here, probably earlier in the year, you were, well, probably caught a glimpse of our Nyla girl. She is my son's, um, son's dog and uh she was a little bit of a house dog for a little while but she's outside and i had to go take some blankets to her i wanted to stay warm it's chilly good morning miss pat okay these nesting boxes we're going to turn them into a fall themed spice set of nesting boxes when i think of fall i think of cinnamon clove, nutmeg, you know, all those aromatic spices that just give you the warm and cozies. Uh, so we're going to color these up for fall and then, you know, they could be reversible. You could do one side, one theme and the other side, another theme, but you'll get the, get the gist of it. We're going to make it simple today. Simple is the name of the game around here. Nothing super fancy, just something simple to give you some ideas to decorate your home with. And it doesn't have to be fall. It can be anything, this idea. So we're going to start by giving these a quick coat of black paint. And this will go so quick because we're going to put it on really thin. <clears throat> basically just enough to give us um, a, a good coverage. That's all we're going to do. We don't want anything super, super thick. Because we're going to go over this black. Okay. And um, for time purposes, I'm not even gonna worry about painting the bottoms right now. Um, I will go back and finish the bottom side later, but for now, I just wanna just be able to set them down and kind of show you all the process of what we're doing today. So, what have you guys been up to? <laughs> Good morning, Miss Jenny. Good morning, Miss Sue. I have missed you guys, and I'm so honored that y'all are up so early. <sighs> I still feel like I have my morning face on today. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, you forgot to turn off your AC. Oh my goodness, Lisa. Well, we have our AC on, but was 
I know if you're, I mean, it's hard to make me cold anymore. <laughs> um, most of the time I'm staying like hot, overheated. <laughs> That's usually my status. <laughs> but um, we like it kind of cold at night in the house because I, I, well, for one, I just like to, you know, would like to curl up in blankets, but I just very rarely can do that anymore. But I still slept with a fan on last night. And I never used to do that up until just a few months ago. So, I'm, I'm hardly ever cold anymore. So, I know probably most of you can relate. <laughs> can relate. Good morning, Miss Paula. Carolyn, good morning. Lisa just found me about a week ago. Oh, I'm so glad you found me. You know, Facebook's a funny thing. You just never know when you'll stumble upon somebody. And sometimes when you do, you forget how it happened. Because Facebook, I think, picks and chooses <laughs> what they want to show you. <laughs> um, so, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Uh-oh. Couldn't... Oh, thank you, Miss Joy. Miss Joy, you're such a loyal fan. I appreciate you so much. She's always... I mean, she's always sprinkled out everything that she can. She's always commenting and giving me a heart on everything she can. You're so, so awesome, Miss Joy. I appreciate you so much. Um, these little nesting boxes, these are not like a graduated set. You know, sometimes you can find them in like graduated sizes, right? These are just the, these are all the same size and I'm okay with that. I am okay with that, but a little graduated set of these would be darling for this as well. Can I hold this without dropping it? We're just giving it a quick coat, real light coat of black chalk bait because I want to show you guys we're going to experiment today with a new I mean it's not complicated but a somewhat new painting technique to give you a primitive look to your items uh hey Miss Monique hey, she's down in the <laughs> I feel you girl I feel you I know crazy crazy times when we have to do that it's I am um, I never slept with a fan on. I always love to be curled up in blankets, but I just can't enjoy those things anymore. It's crazy how our bodies change. <laughs> okay. These little these little lids are a little bit tricky to hold on to, um, but that will dry super fast. And this is like a paper mache coating, so it's soaking it right up, and that'll even help in the faster drying time. All right, you guys. So, if you've been wondering where I've been, <laughs> wondering where I disappeared to, I've been here. I've been here at home. We have been, for the last two weeks, well, about two and a half weeks ago, I came down really sick. My husband brought it home from work. He was sick first, and usually I stay good. I usually don't get sick very easily. I, I it, it kicked me second, <laughs> and I was down, and I was down for... I was down for a good two weeks. But during the meantime, my kids started coming down with it. So the whole family had it. So it's been probably, all in all, it's probably been about three weeks that somebody, if not all of us, have been sick in the house. And that just takes a toll. <laughs> and it lingered and lingered and lingered. And then on top of that, I had all of these auction, not auction pieces, but buy it now pieces that I have been posting. Um, and you guys have been claiming and I was in the middle of processing and boxing those and I'm like oh, I had to put all that on I had to slam on the brakes <laughs> and so um, Finished those up all except for the last three boxes. I've got to finish those up today But I know everybody's probably wondering where in the heck has she been? <laughs> um, it's been it's been a little challenging um, But we're back on the mend and we're we're back in operation around here. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Sheila. Good morning from Pennsylvania, Miss Jen. How are you? Uh, one of these days I'm gonna get up to Pennsylvania. One of these days I want to go there, up to the Northeast. I've not been that, that direction and I so want to go. All right, we're giving that a quick dry and they're already, <laughs> they're already almost dry, honestly. Okay. So let me kind of, let's experiment with this paint method I wanted to try today. Now these are gonna be some fall themed spice nesting boxes. So I've picked out some colors. Uh, one of them we're actually probably gonna leave black. 
we're going to do black, orange, and a creamy vanilla color, okay? Now, if you all have seen me do this before, primitive, I like things that are primitive, vintage, rustic in color, right? Okay, let me set this one over here. Let's just work on one of these at a time. I like to make my colors um, sort of like those earthy shades and tones, like those historical rich colors, which a lot of times has brown tones, undertones to them. Good morning from California. Oh my gracious, it's super early for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Miss Beth. I appreciate that. Miss Becky from upstate New York, welcome in. Um, so I like giving my colors, you know, those that, that shade, those, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, the richness, the, oh, this one, it's, oh, we got it. <laughs> okay. So, if you have bright orange colors or bright colors at all, you can dull them down. Give them a little bit more of a primitive uh, look. Good morning, Miss Charlotte. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm going to put this on my, on my plate here. I'm going to show you what I do. Um, and there's kind of two ways to do it. You can use something like instant coffee, sprinkle it in, let it soak in, and, and kind of do its thing with your paint. And it browns it down, okay? Now this paint is already pretty thick, so all I'm gonna do is take my coffee grunge. Oh my goodness, Sharon, rainy in New York. It, we had rain a couple of days ago and it rained all day long. It was just a slow rain. It made you feel like fall. Fall's here, you guys. Fall is here. Isn't that awesome? We've been waiting for it <laughs> for months. Good morning, Miss Mary and Miss Billy. How are you? Oh, Miss Debbie, you've been sick. Oh my gracious, I know. I think it's kind of just, Flying around the country around here, isn't it? I'm gonna take my coffee grunge and I'm just gonna drizzle some right in that paint. It's gonna thin it down. It's gonna dull it down. Will it be enough? I don't know, we'll see. But what I'm gonna do, let's take this, let's take this sponge brush. Okay, I'm just gonna mix it in there. And then I'm just gonna keep going until I get it the shade I want it. Now, if it starts getting too runny, I'm gonna switch over and use my instant coffee, okay? But for this particular painting technique, I do want my paint to be thin. Because as you'll see in just a minute, it's also gonna help give us that layered, primitive look to the finish on the paint, okay? All right, now my, my coffee grunge is super goopy. That's what we like, it's that cinnamon that goops up <laughs> goopy 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 but it's perfect because it helps it adhere to the surface that you're applying it to and that is just not doing much you guys let's go in for the big dog here let's sprinkle in some of this instant coffee because I really want this to be a good primitive orange color now it's just like a science experiment <laughs> keep mixing if you have you know if it gets too dark you can add more paint to it and then once you get the color you like it, then you can store it in a little container and you can keep it for when you wanna use it again. Now, I will tell you, once you add the instant coffee, those crystals take just a few minutes to sort of start dissolving before you really start seeing the color change, okay? Now, sometimes when you're using acrylic paints and you start mixing colors, sometimes it can get really muddy looking, if you know what I mean. If you've done that, you know exactly what I mean. And that's not the color I want to go for. Some of you may be saying, well, why doesn't she just add some brown or some black? And that sometimes doesn't always work right. So you got to be careful there. Plus, I, this instant coffee is so cheap. I would rather do that than, than waste more paint because some paints can be expensive. Now, this is, this is getting us there. This is getting us there. Now, on the camera, it always appears brighter. I don't know why. I think it's just my, my lighting. But it always appears brighter on camera than it does in person. So keep that in mind if you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's still really bright. What is she doing? <laughs> now, I'm going to let that instant coffee, it's still dissolving, I can tell, because when I scrape it across my plate, my plate, I can see some little brown streaks starting to dissolve in that paint. So that's how I know that is starting to dissolve, and that color will continue to kind of darken, okay? Now, if we look... Let me compare this. See if I can get a good comparison look here. All right, 
Now, can you see the difference in the colors, <laughs> right? <laughs> Big difference there. And this would not fly with primitive style decorating. It's just too bright, okay? Uh, hey, Miss Debbie from Secondhand Treasures. How are you, friend? Um, all right, so here we go. We've taken these little nesting boxes that we've just coated with a basic layer of black chalk paint. Good morning, Miss Sherry. Good morning, Miss Mary. Um, now we're gonna take this, and before I get going too far, I'm gonna have a paper towel handy, okay? And I'm gonna, I am gonna put a little bit of this coffee grunge on it. I don't know if that's necessary, but we're gonna see. This is the first time I've done this painting method. Kind of been looking around at some ideas, and I stumbled across this on Pinterest, and I thought, ah, yeah, I mean, I've done something similar, but not quite exactly like this. So I thought, I'm gonna give this a try and see how it goes. All right, are we ready? Uh, good morning, Miss Yvonne. Good morning, Denise. Miss Deanie and Miss Rhonda. You use the nutmeg brown paint and red paint. Okay, awesome. That's awesome. We're going for an orange, black, and a cream set of spiced nesting boxes today. All right. Now, we're going to put this on. And I'm probably going to work in a small section at a time here. Okay, pretty basic, right? <laughs> Nothing to it. I'm going to take this paper towel, and before it starts drying, I'm going to wipe it back. And it's almost going to be like a paint wash. Yeah. All right, see what it's doing here? This is kind of more of the color that I'm going for. Um, but it's grabbing that paint, and it's basically going to wash it wash it out even thinner and this is working perfectly i'm kind of glad that i didn't put paint all the way around this is going to dull it down we're still going to see that orange but it's going to be much more muted okay i'm look on camera it almost looks green that is so bizarre <laughs> so bizarre now i do want it to be a little orange here so i'm going to add a little bit more and I think this time I'm going to let it dry just a little bit before I start wiping. Just a tiny bit. Um, and you can see you can do this at any color theme you want. You know, if you have a different color theme in mind for your home to match your kitchen or, or whatever, go with it, right? I'm doing some fall colors today. I'm going to let that dry for just a second. I have a little dryer. Let's give it a little bit of heat for a second. It'll dry really quick because it's super thin, super thin layer. Now this coffee grunge on this paper towel and just wipe it back some more. I don't want, see that black layer of paint underneath is giving us that dark undertone that we want as well. Okay. There we go. I think I like that. I think. We'll see. Let's give it a dry. I can't, I can't believe that it's showing up sort of with like with a green tint on the camera. All right, one box is going to be black. The other one we're going to do in a creamy, um, a creamy white, a creamy white. Now I'm all out of my white chalk paint, so my my Waverly white chalk paint. So we're going to use this one. Never use this. This is folk art chalk paint. So, but it is a lot brighter than I normally use. Oh gosh, it's thick too, which is fine. Because we're gonna thin it down with a little bit of coffee grunge. Y'all have your coffee? <laughs> I have my coffee too, <laughs> right here. <laughs> That's about as close to coffee as I get. I'm not a coffee girl, you guys. I'm not a coffee girl. I love the smell of coffee, but I'm just not a fan of the flavor. I know that's crazy. For some of you to believe, I think I'm gonna go with a thinner brush this time. We're gonna experiment with this. Look, I got black paint all over me. I put that coffee grunge with that white chalk paint and we're gonna thin it down. I may thin it, I may put a little too much on here, we'll see. I can take my brush and pull that paint up on my paint, on my plate, paint and plate. <laughs> I'm getting those two words mixed up in my brain. Yeah, that's good. Now see, I put a little too much coffee grunge, but if I tilt my plate, 
that excess runs down and I can still work with this color and get it where I want it. This is sort of like a warm vanilla bean color. Good morning, Miss. Uh, Miss Yvonne, you need another bowl full of coffee. <laughs> I know, I know, I just don't drink it. My husband and my youngest are the only two in the house that like it. I just need more sugar and creamer. Yeah, I, <laughs> and we hot ice cream. <laughs> I don't know how y'all drink hot things. Like, now that I'm like, oh, hot all the time, I just can't imagine drinking something hot, you guys. Like, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I would like have to be sitting in a freezer if I wanted to drink coffee. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Jan. Uh, you can't make it without coffee, Stephanie. Oh gosh. I, I can get, I understand. I think I, if I did enjoy coffee, I think I would have to be a cold coffee drinker. I just can't do hot right now. <laughs> All right, so I've taken that and that really warmed up that white. So let's take... Let's try something else this time. Let's take a dry towel and let's wipe this down. And I'm gonna start at the edges and pull up because I want to reveal some of that black underneath. Okay. I'm telling you, the camera does not portray this. <laughs> like, it looks in light, real light. That's so crazy. It looks, it, I mean, it is a little streaky, I will say. I'm going to coat it again. I think I may have wiped too much off. All right, so we got to get this paint done, and we're going to jazz up these little primitive nesting boxes. All right, I think that's good. All right, now... Oh, shoot, I should have done the lids. You know, I've kind of been out of the rhythm around here lately. <laughs> been out of rhythm around here when it comes to crafting, I tell you. Paint. Now, you could leave the rims black if you want. I've seen lots of primitive nesting boxes that's, that have black lids. Do what you like. And if you don't like it, you can paint over it. All right. Um, I'm gonna look to see if I like the swirled effect, but I don't, I like the, I don't know. There we go, that's the color. That color is just, just not quite, the, that white needs a second coat to get the right tint, I think. And we're gonna go a little creamier. I like that cream. With the black and the orange will be pretty. Yeah, that's better. I needed two coats. <clears throat> All right. This orange one, let's give this one a quick second coat here. So, it will match. And I kind of want my paint, my strokes, my streaks, lines, whatever you want to call them, to kind of all be going in the same direction on the side because you're getting that sort of sort of like a dry brush look if you will um with that undertone of black it'll probably need a second coat let's give that a quick dry now the black one we get to keep it just like it is all right this paper mache dries so fast so 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 fast I'm still not sure if I'm pleased with this orange, you guys, but I don't want to fuss with it a whole lot. I don't want to take any more of our time fussing with it. Um, because, you know what? I think when I get these the way I want them, I'll probably give them a good coat of coffee grunge and grunge them up with a little bit of the Distress Ink. And that'll probably give me the shade that I really am after. So I'm not going to worry too much. Just had to talk myself out of that. <laughs> um, Uh-oh. Off the subject for me, who said that? Uh, so the coffee sludge has to be refrigerated. If you're not using it, yes, stick it in your refrigerator. Um, it'll help it last longer. It'll help it last longer. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Miss Dee. Um, 
Yeah, it'll get, it'll get grody. It'll get like the not, not so good grody. <laughs> um, oh, you didn't, Jenny? Well, I mean, I will sometimes if I'm crafting and I, you know, how sometimes I, you know, just leave my crafting table and don't get cleaned up. I mean, I have left mine out for a day or two <laughs> without any problem. Um, it could depend on what kind of water you use. Like if you uh, use like um, bottled water, um, that will help it last longer too if, versus if you're using just tap water. <clears throat> My water, I heat up to like a boiling point. So that could help it last longer too without putting it in the fridge. Uh, thank you, Miss Joy. Good morning, Miss Janet. Good morning, Justin. How are you guys? All right. I'm not sure that I'm, I'm satisfied with this color, and I won't know until I'm finished, you guys. I just won't. All right. Um, Uh-oh. Scissors. Hang on. <laughs> I realize I don't have my scissors. I might have some scissors right here behind me. Hang on. Hang on. I've been doing some rearranging. <laughs> well, let's, I've been doing some organizing. And you know what happens when you organize? <laughs> well, you can't find anything. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, it's crazy right here. So, um, I have little, uh, I have some circles that I've cut out that I've been using these as little toppers for some of my jars. And I'm going to use these to tear out to make some little handmade, homespun style little labels for these spice sets. That's still not quite all the way dry. Let's turn that heat back on for a minute. Um, so what I'm going to do, these have already been, um, let's work with the black one since I know it's already dry. Um, and I... See under that rim right there? I'm gonna definitely have to make sure I get that little rim of that lid coated later. Uh, I'm gonna rip this little label to the size that I want. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Um, use, use whatever basic color fabric. You could even use paper if you want to, guys. You could use brown craft paper and do the same, same idea. Uh, you could have some printables and do the same idea. Please tell me I came to the, oh, I was like, I thought I had everything. <laughs> My pen that I like to use for this. So, you can use fabric, you can use paper, whatever you have. Now, I, these are already cut out in circles because it's just what I had handy. But these have been coffee stained, grunged, and baked. So, they have that real good tattered, crispy edge feel, right? Uh, thank you, Miss Betty. Do we have some new friends here? Um, uh, thank you. I appreciate you. All right, so I'm gonna kind of tear these out in a rectangular shape. And I like to just give it a little nick. If you guys are new to this style, which I know many of you are familiar with it, uh, but if not, just give it a little nick with your scissors and then just tear. And what it does, I'm gonna give you a close up. It'll give you that really cute tattered edge, okay? Like so, oh, can you see that? See how that edge is just tattered? And that is like a little homemade label, you guys. It's so cute. Now, it's already been coffee stained. It already has that cinnamon and vanilla smell. We're gonna put that on there. <gasps> you see where I'm going with it? See where I'm going? Okay, now I want this to kind of look like a stitched, like a hand-stitched little label. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, hmm, I'm gonna, I should have a little, my little fine tip Sharpie. That's what I could have used. I'm just gonna take this little gel ink pen for lack of better options at the moment. And I'm gonna make little faux stitch marks around the edge of this. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my little spice names on these little labels. Now, fall spices, I think cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, you could do whatever. And it doesn't have, you could make these like not spice related. You could just do some fall words. Um, you do you. We're going fall themed today though. Here, <laughs> with me. <laughs> you can make them anything you want. All right. 
So we're getting that hand stitched look without the hand stitched time <laughs> that it takes. Ah, isn't that cute? <laughs> Good morning, Miss uh, Betty. No problem, lady. You are fine anytime you come. Okay, uh, let's see. This one, we'll make this one cinnamon. How about that? Okay, now cinnamon is a long word. And the A is, the N and the A is in the center. So let's start with I want to make sure that I have enough room to get that whole let word on here. And the more handwritten it looks, the better. Because we're pretending that this is a hand stitched little tag. <laughs> and when you hand stitch letters, you know they're not going to be perfect. They're gonna have lots of character. And that's what we're going for. I'm looking at my bottle of cinnamon because you know, sometimes when you're like in the motion, in the, in the moment, <laughs> you can uh, misspell things really easily. Uh, I've done that. Plenty of times. Oh, I love the look of this. Okay, you guys. All right. Here's our cinnamon one. Oh, I forgot to flip my camera today. Let's flip that camera. Let's flip that camera. Did I flip it? No. There. Is that right? There. <laughs> there we go. All right. How cute is that gonna be? That's gonna be cute. Now, um, I would probably put a little bit of Mod Podge on the back of this to probably stick it to my container. Don't have my Mod Podge handy, so all I'm gonna do is just kind of basically smear just a little bit of hot glue on that. Because you know, hot glue, sometimes it, it doesn't dry flat. It kind of gets bumpy, and I don't want that bumpy look. So I'm just gonna kind of smear some of that hot glue on there. Maybe. Come on. It's like it's early. I don't want to work. <laughs> Do you like that voice change? <laughs> don't ask. Don't ask where that came from. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I think I'm kind of delirious this morning, guys. There we go. That's, I mean, it doesn't get any more simple than that. Uh, I just drag it out way too long. Okay. Now, this one. It is too white. Oh my gosh, you guys. You know what we're gonna do? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna distress this puppy. I gotta get a look up my time. We're good, we're good, we're gonna finish. Oh, now what happened to my comments here? There we go. Good morning, Miss Helen. Um, all right, I'm loading up my brush, my dabber, dauber. Yeah, I had to use a different white chalk paint today, and I'm not sure I'm crazy about it. I'm not sure. You know what? Let's go for the black, because we have black. We're going to have black accents. I think, I think we need to go. Just go in. Let's just jump in with the black. Since I didn't... I couldn't quite wipe enough paint off of that and still get the color effect that I wanted. So I'm gonna use this black to kind of go around and outline the bottom of this. And I'm pulling it up and dragging it. And as I do, don't look at the bottom, we'll finish that later. It's making it appear that some of that black paint is peeking through. There's more than one way to get the look you want. If one way doesn't work, try another. <laughs> That's what we're doing. I'm going to go around. Now, this top is really not going to be seen a whole lot because the lid's going to be on it. But, and I think it could even still use a little bit of coffee grunge on it. But we just, we grubbed that up. Not grubbed, but we uh, distressed it maybe. Is that what you want to say? Let's go around and do the same thing on this lid. 
paying attention to the edges. We're going to go quick. We're going to go quick because I want to get this finished for you guys. And there are presenters lined up all day today. If you would like to watch all day, check out the Creatives Depot Facebook group or the Craft on the Clock group. It'll be streaming in both of those groups today. And in between each presenter, all you have to do is refresh your page. And if you don't know how to do that, if you're watching on like a, a mobile device, or iPad, just take your finger as you're on the group page, just take your finger and push the screen, drag it down and then let go and it will refresh. And then whenever the next presenter is live, it will pop up eventually, okay? If you, you might have to repeat that process a couple of times, but you'll get the hang of it. Neat little hack for you. That's more like it. That's more like it. <laughs> now, this, we are gonna darken the edges on this one too. Um, I'm dragging it up because I want some of those black streaks to come up from the bottom. I think I need to re-ink my little black pad. I did re-ink my brown ones that I have this week. I did get some little ink refiller and re-ink those. I love these little mini sizes. I know you can get the bigger ink pads of the same color, but something about these small ones are just easier for me to manage. And they don't take up as much room storage-wise either, you know. Oh, this is looking awesome. This is making like a world of difference. This is getting me that color I was, I was looking for. Yep, taking it around that edge and rubbing it in. Okay, we got two little labels to put on here and we will be finished up, you guys. Let's check the time. We're doing good. Thank you, Miss Pat. I appreciate it. You know what I should have done? Hindsight's 2020. I should have measured this little label. That way I could have cut them all about the same size. Since my little nesting boxes are all the same size. But hey, like I said earlier, there's more than one way to get what you need. <laughs> so... I'm just hold, I just held it up to that little label and um, that'll help me give me an eyeball, an eyeball measurement. Anybody else like to use that measuring tool, that eyeball, you just eye it? <laughs> uh, these don't have to be the same size, but I think cinnamon. This one will make it, let's make this one, um, let's make this one nutmeg. I need something hard. My table has a little bit of a cushion to it. Um, do these little faux stitches along the edge. A little fine tip Sharpie is good for this, or this one, this is like a gel pen. And I don't know, the ink just flows out of it super easy, and I like to use this for any time I want to write on cloth. And then you might want to heat set it though, okay? Um, apply, you know, give it, take your heat tool uh, to it and just warm it up, kind of heat set that ink. And I've never had a problem with it running after that. Okay. This is something super basic, you guys. You can take this idea, run with it go all kinds of crazy with it like make all kinds of different you can make a christmas set of these um you know it, there's all kinds of things you can do with it now what was that cinnamon nutmeg and what was the other one we wanted to do? clove hmm maybe i should do a shorter tag i don't know we're going to go with it Let's put the O in the center for clove. Okay, and remember we want this to kind of look hand stitched. So 
You can make your letters a little wonky and get away with it. They can be not so perfect. That's what gives it that charm. And anyway, I think I'm gonna make this a, a lowercase c. There we go. That's gonna look cute. Yes, let's do this one as a small one for time's sake. Hand stitching around the edges and I'm gonna give you a close up view of these. And we'll make this one What did I say we would make this? A oh, clove. No, clove. A nutmeg is this one. This one's going to be smaller. It's going to be misfit size. That's okay. Um, nutmeg. I always start with the center letters and put them in the center of my labels, and that kind of gives me space kind of lets me know how much space I have <laughs> um, towards the edges. Now, and like I said, you can get away with it not being perfect because we want this home handmade look. We have three minutes. We're going to get this done. Thank you, Miss Jillian, for sharing the love. I appreciate you so much for doing that. Um, where is the back of this one? It does have a little seam, and I can't even find it. Hmm. I was going to try to make sure that I get that on the... Let's smear just a little bit of hot glue on there. Maybe. My hot glue... Enter it. Press it down. Ooh, nose is tickly. <gasps> yeah, this white one, I think I'm going to have to grunge up a little bit. I need a little bit more brown color to that white. So I'm going to take my brown Distress Ink and I'm going to probably rub over that till I get the tone of color right that I want for that one. Ah. Uh, cute <laughs> how cute are those now uh, like I said my white I'm not happy with this white so I'm gonna fuss with this white one a little bit more you could tie a really cute uh, my camera is backwards and so like throws my brain and my eyes all off <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna fuss with the color on this one a little bit more to get it just right I will take a cute little photo for you guys give you some ideas on how you can use something like this in your home but it doesn't get any easier than this. These little nesting paper mache nesting boxes, they are so inexpensive. You've got a cute little, good sizable little piece of decor to use in your fall home. You all, thank you so much for joining me so bright and early this morning. I'll see you again sometime next week. Until then, enjoy the rest of today and thank you so much for joining me. Bye guys.